Hello YouTube you lights, how are ya? Me, I'm doing good. It's your buddy Alex here again, but you already know that. And as promised, today we're going to look at how you can make a dynamic EQ. Okay, you save yourself a few bucks if you're really interested in doing it. And we'll talk quickly about what is a dynamic EQ and how it can help you. Alrighty, okay, have a seat. Let's check it out. So I'm going to play this clip for you. Let me show you which clip. Again, it's our happy Indian man, remember? The one from the last video who is well fed and super happy. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Isn't he happy? Okay, so let's have a look at the dynamic EQ here. And I'm going to turn this down a bit just so I can hear myself talk. Okay, so if I press play and engage a dynamic EQ, this is Isotopes uh, Ozone 7 uh, dynamic EQ, and you can pick up a Waves or an Isotope one for pretty cheap, and I recommend that you do it because they're so handy. If you're interested in mastering your tracks in any way, then certainly something like this is going to make a huge impact on how you do that. So what you notice is interesting so far, isn't it? It's basically just a typical EQ, and as far as I can move the frequencies around, it's a little bit slow right now. But you can see that I can move these uh, EQs around, I can turn them on and off, and as I pull them down, it merely just compresses it, right? It's not always taking this dip out. In fact, this white line represents when it's taking out that section of the EQ, that section of frequencies. But it's interesting because it only removes them when those frequencies cross a certain threshold, okay? A threshold that I set right here. And that's handy because if you listen carefully, let's have a good listen. <laughs> Right, so you may or may not notice that what's interesting about it is that it retains all the subtle aspect of his voice. When he inhales like this, you hear that at the full volume and the full EQ that it's intended and when it was recorded, but when that f same frequency gets out of hand, it just tugs it down a little bit and it does that directly proportional with the, sign the type of gain that's coming into the EQ. So it's super handy for keeping all the sparkle in the full body of say a vocal for example, and when frequencies start to get out of hand you can just tug them down and you can set your threshold and then you'll know that when those frequencies peak they'll get tugged down and it'll create a nice even EQ across the top and that's super good for vocals okay it's the new way to EQ vocals especially and I highly recommend that you get into doing this if you plan to record vocals at all and if that's the case go get yourself the waves plugin or the isotope plugin they're worth the money okay but if you don't want to do that and you just want to mess around you can absolutely make one out of just stock bitwig devices and that's what we'll look at here so I should have lo I should have kept that loaded up what was I thinking so like anything, when we first make a plugin uh, with Bitwig devices, you have to look at what are the things we're going to need. Well, obviously, first of all, we're going to need an EQ with a set amount of frequency bands for us to play with. Second of all, you want the ability to change those frequency bands left and right or change them in, in as far as which frequencies are affecting. Also, you're going to need it to be able to go up and down, of course, right? And not only that, you're going to need a compressor because you want to set how much compression is coming in. Well, not so much a compressor, but some kind of way of reading and determining when those frequencies are coming in. And lastly, uh, is a Q, a Q section like this to determine how wide and how or how many frequencies are going to be affected by the said EQ choice. Okay. All right. So let's look at what I've loaded up here. 
don't don't get put off by this in fact i'm gonna hide it for now but basically it's just an eq5 okay and the reason i chose the eq5 is obviously just because i wanted five of these frequency bands and already you can tell that we have the ability to move these around and we can move them up and down like that and we can change the q or the frequency band right here okay and so knowing that that gives us a lot to work with and because bitwig allows you to use uh macros and things like that little devices on the side we can easily make one of these so well, this is what i did and it may or may not be the best way i've definitely seen some online that have done better than me uh, but i already own a dynamic eq and so i'm not gonna you know go through this whole painful process of building one of these okay but essentially i loaded up an audio sidechain okay i set the audio sidechain to the same source that my track is on okay now i've set that i've set the uh the filters or these guys here so that they're very close together centering around this value so if this is my first eq that i'm working on i've set these let's see what's this one at that's at 85 and that's at 75 okay so five hertz are surrounding this value 80 hertz there okay now i've taken this i've clicked the mod button and i've dragged this uh the gain value down so what will happen now is anytime it picks up audio between this bracket between these margins right here it's going to pull the gain down on 80 hertz so that's basically it i've gone and created a dynamic eq around one but there's some problems there if you haven't noticed already for example i can change the q here that's fine but what if i want to move this upwards okay well what's happening now is that it's still reading uh, the frequency between 75 and 85, but it's affecting the frequencies at 148 and we don't want that there might be some places where that's kind of groovy and that's kind of cool and uh, We'll definitely in one of our uh, Friday night. Let's get weird videos. We'll probably dick around with that in the future But for now we want to keep it so that there's just a few macros controlling this right let me delete this sorry Okay, so I've put this into a chain because that way you can just right click and save the preset to your library, call it dynamic EQ. But also my main controls are right here. So here's the EQ one's Q value. And the way I set that is by clicking mod and I raised this one up and this one down by the same value. Therefore, when I turn up this knob, these spread apart. Okay, I've also used this to mod this in a downward direction. So as I turn that up, the Q widens, as in it affects more frequencies surrounding that. So now that these are both connected by this knob, when I turn this knob up, both these spread apart and it affects the same amount of frequencies and that's how i got my q now i know i didn't set this up perfect if you're going to build one of these then you should absolutely nail those values i just spread mine apart a little bit just to get the message across okay also you'll notice now because it's picking up more frequencies in here it's going to affect the gain a lot more so i also use this to mod the depth downwards all the way to zero so that as i turn it up this has less of, a, of an effect on the gain okay i know that's pretty weird we're going to do it for eq2 in a sec but i'm just explaining it now okay secondly i wanted to be able to change the frequencies and so that's pretty easy you put in another macro you click the mod button and you turn this up by say 13 10 12 13 uh, hertz and then you move both of these up by 10 12 or 13 hertz so now as you'll notice as i turn this up the little blue dot goes up and you won't see these move but you'll just have to trust me you can see them on the knobs that they kind of move with it so now this bracket is effectively over here and it should be right around where that is okay all right let's let's build another one of these macros so first add a macro okay and label it right away i'm going to call it eq2 okay because now i know that i'm 
using this macro in concern with this second uh, EQ point here. Okay, now just with this one, just like with that one, we're adjusting the Q of it. So I'm going to click this. You know what? I should definitely be in the second one. Okay, so click your second audio sidechain, the one that's assigned to number two here. Click the mod button and spread these apart. Let's see. We'll do, uh, do, 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 uh, let's do plus five ish. Okay, again, it's not going to be perfect, but you should nail these if you plan to do this. Okay, and then minus five. So now, as I turn this up, those will spread apart. Okay, and that's what we want. Okay, put the mod back on. And we're going to grab the cue and turn it down. Do, do, do. All the way. Let's just do all the way. Okay. All right. This is at a really high value. I'm going to bring that down a little bit here. Match it up with the rest. Okay. So now as we turn this up, the Q here goes down, which means it affects more frequencies. And this uh, levels with it by spreading these open a little bit and, uh, and reading more frequencies. So that's good. That, set up, that sets up our EQ2. Oh, no, it doesn't. I also have to bring the gain down to compensate for it. Okay. All the way down to zero. So now, as the knob goes up, you'll see this goes down. And that will make sense once I play this for you. But before that, let's just create another macro. Okay. And we're going to call it the, the EQ2 frequency. Okay. All right. So now this time when I move this knob up, I want these fr this frequency to go up. Okay. So click the mod button, choose the Hertz, move it up by, I don't know, let's do 10. Ba, 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 10 okay and now both of these as well up by 10 whatever, whatever that's good enough up by 10 somewhere like that okay so now when we raise the knob the EQ goes up okay so if I was making one of these I would set it so that this frequency point goes all the way to the third frequency point so that way you wouldn't have to go backwards right because then you have to set this knob in the middle and mod it uh, that way okay so let's have a listen and i'll play with some of these knobs and explain what's happening as we listen okay okay so you'll notice here that as number two is picking up the frequencies here, it's reducing the frequencies there. So that is to say, if a peak, if a frequency peaks inside this margin right there, it's going to reduce that by um, whatever amount that I set up here. So now, if I turn up this, now my EQ is reading a wider area of frequencies and it's affecting a wider area of frequencies and that's how you notice that it's just a little bit wider now right but it has much less effect in fact I might reduce this a little there we go see that now it's taking in a huge amount of frequencies there and it's the same with one if I turn up one you know what don't bring this to zero. Oh, I didn't even do it. Oh, shoot. What an idiot. Bring that back up a little bit. Okay, do you see that? How many frequencies it's picking up? And as I close it down, it's affecting fewer frequencies. See? Now, I can raise this. And there's my EQ has moved over there. And what I've effectively done is create a dynamic EQ just in that way. So this might not be the way that I do a dynamic EQ because it's not perfect. And I would want a, a, a dynamic EQ that has the crossover points worked out and is absolutely perfect. That's why I have Ozone 7 dynamic EQ as well as the Waves, uh, what's it called, C6 
Okay, the Wave C6 I think is like 30 bucks. It's and it's so worth it. But it's interesting. It's an interesting exercise to show you that really with the building blocks inside a Bitwig, you can build any almost any kind of dynamic plugin that you'd like to build. Uh, it just might not be perfect. I'm sure you could set it so that it's perfect, but at least now you'll have an understanding of how they work and the way that those plugins kind of tick, okay? And when you have that understanding, you'll know better on how to use them, and that's really just what it's all about, okay? All right, I hope that fixes you up a little bit. I hope that did something for you. Uh, I'm expecting a lot of you to have complaints about this one because I know it's kind of a sloppy uh, build right here, uh, but again, Again, I already own dynamic EQs. I don't need to build one. If you want to build one, uh, definitely go in and be super tedious with how you set it up and be out, think outside the box on, on other things that you can add that are going to help you uh, make it more perfect and more easy to do. Okay. All right, kids have a good night. We'll see you in the next video.